All right, as we start this project, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up a file system where you can keep everything that you're working on in a nice, concise uh, file uh, location so where you can refer to everything in a single file, which we call a project folder. Now, for everything that you do from now on for the class, you'll be setting up a project folder for it just so it's more convenient for um, me if I ask for your files or also for yourself so you know exactly where everything from... 3D models and animations and textures and all the information you're working on a particular file uh, you're going to designate a specific location where they're stored. Now while I am working in 3ds Max um, 2012 and it is different from the studio version or the, excuse me, the design version that you're going to be using at IVC the principles are the same when it comes to managing your project folders. So in this case while I have 3D Max 2012 open I'm going to go ahead and click on the green icon here and second from the bottom you'll see something called manage so when you're in manage you'll notice you'll see over here it says set project folder set a folder to be the root of the current 3ds max project and when I click on that it tells me to browse for a folder that I want to use in this case case I'm gonna use my MCP which is essentially my computer and I'm gonna click on my D drive because on my D drive is where I have the most amount of space I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm just gonna name it IVC animation and from there I'm just going to hit enter and click OK and now when I actually go to save this uh, file even though there's nothing there if I were to go to save it's going to say where do you want to save it and you'll notice the hierarchy tree is exactly where it was so D IBC animation scenes and that's where it'll be saved now I'm going to go ahead and go to my computer just click on start MCP and I'll go to my D drive Go to I. It is right here. IVC animation. So within this, you have everything saved that you can use for this entire project you're working on. And that being from everything from your archive folders. Uh, everything in here is up to this point empty to your uh, auto backs, which every five to ten minutes uh, it saves your files in case it crashes. To your downloads, your exports, your expresses, your imports, your material libraries, previews, proxies, render output, render presets, scene assets, scenes, video posts, v posts, and the actual settings path, the configuration file, which in this case I, it just happens to be, and it always will be, the IVC animation because that's what we named it. So let's go ahead and close this. Now for this project that we're going to be going over right now is kind of what I went over last week in class and that is a simple unwrapping of a simple box just to get the procedure down. I know a lot of you didn't grasp what I was saying and it is a difficult thing to explain on a video but I am aware this time of some of the questions that you all asked and uh, some of the issues a lot of you ran into. So what I'll do is I'll sit there and try or sit here and try to remember exactly what it is you guys were asking and I'll try to address each one of those uh, the do's, the do nots uh, that we kind of discussed in class last week. Okay, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and create a simple box. And uh, you'll notice one in, let's see, it's, the dimensions I used last time were uh, perfectly square just for the example purposes of what we were working on. And I hit S to create it dead center. But in case yours is not dead center, the way you could tell, now I'm working on a PC, mind you. So those of you working on a PC on this, you're actually. It's more beneficial than working on a Mac because you can just simply hit your F12 key. I believe it's Option or Alt or whatever function key might be in a Mac. I, I don't remember. It's FN function something. But I like to keep my stuff centered in world. So where it says here, Move Transform Absolute World, it's off the x-axis by minus 5 degrees. So I'm just going to right-click on the bottom arrow here and zero it out. Because I like all my work when I'm modeling to go ahead and be 100% dead center or triple zero world space. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hit M on my keyboard and open up my material editor. And it opened up on my other monitor, so let me just go ahead and drag it over. Let's bring it over here. Now by default, a lot of you had this open up. And then some of the emails I got and some of the questions I was asked was, um, how do I get this simple one there? Now this is what I do prefer to use. I prefer to use the node-based uh, graphical user interface for 3ds max and that is it enables me to actually create some uh, nodes such as this and then drag that and connect it into an object and or create my bump maps do all that good stuff 
and do them as nodes because for those of us who work in game engines we're primarily node based uh, and node based is particularly a just a visual uh, representation of what we're seeing in the regular 3ds max um, material editor and in this case I'm gonna go ahead and just undo what I did here just delete those and I'll show you how to switch back to the normal actual material editor here and that is up here in the first thing Let's zoom in mode compact material editor now for years let me go ahead and drag it over to this monitor I'm pretty much all the the uh, versions of 3d studio max except for um, 2011 in 2012, this was the material editor we had to do. And it is a node-based concept of a material editor. It's just not visually or graphically interfaced as a node-based. Um, but in this case, you know, rather than explain all the differences for the IBC class, I'll just go ahead and do what I normally do in class, and that is please grab a gray material and put it on your box, as I just did right there. And just so you keep track of things, and this is part of, you know, showing your professionalism as a student and as a professional, is name your stuff. And in this case, you'll notice the gray sphere that I dragged and put on the box here is named 01-default. Well, I don't like to keep it like that way. I like to keep it to where everything's organized and everything's well thought out because you never know when you're working, you may hand off your file to somebody else. And you want to make sure that it's 100% um, usable to everybody. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and name it box. Okay, very simple. Now, the way I can uh, view the simple materials that are here is we actually have 32 of them, but only six are visible by default. But if you were to right click on any of these spheres, you'll notice you have some selections here drag and copy, drag and rotate, reset rotation, render map options, magnify, da 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 da. da. But you're able to actually see all 6x4 or 32 actual severe spheres for the material editor here. If you were just to click on this here, and you'll be able to see all of them that are there. This is how I tend to work when I get a lot of materials in the scene. But if I know I'm just going to have a single object, like in the case of this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at 3 by 2 just very simply like this. Now you can always tell in the material editor when it's actually being used in your scene and an object is actually calling from this specific material here and that their little corners of the material slot, not the ball itself, but the actual corners because it's square, have these little embossed, I guess, or, or white corners to it. So if I were to go ahead and, let's say, create a copy of this, just to show you an example, let's just make a copy, but I'll drag this material on this one now. Say there we go on that one, and then I'll go ahead and just do this. You'll notice now they both have it because they're calling on two separate materials. And if you hold your thing on here, just notice these little uh, dots here are showing that this one is being used here, this one's being used here, and if they were not being used, they would look like this. They're outlined in white, it means they are in the scene or they were used, but they're not being used at the moment. So let's just go ahead and undo all this here go back to our original thing and remember it's good practice to also in your viewport window to get used to working with the edge faces on for those of you working on a Macintosh again it's FN function 4 button I think FN was the tab it's a com combo button information but for those of you who were fortunate enough to work on 3ds Max on a PC just hit F F4 now F4 it turns your ed fa edge faces on or you can actually right click on this word here realistic in any window wireframe wireframe but in this one realistic I'm gonna go ahead and right click and go to edge faces and it does the same thing and a lot of you also notice that that whenever you create something you'll notice there's that bounding box that's around everything and what this bounding box is it just shows whatever you have selected is a highlighter almost well I like to turn that off and that is just by hitting the J key J all right, so now that we have this, we have our selected material on there. It is called box. Cool. I will close this down now, the material editor, and I'll go over here to my actual window. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt W to maximize this window. You notice it is perfectly centered, triple zero. Okay. Also, there's a neat little trick for those of you who are working on PC. Uh, if you actually want to be able to see quickly in what's called X-ray mode or transparency mode, right in your 3D model, is all you need to do is click Alt X and it makes things transparent. And that's convenient when you're working on something and you want to see what's on the other side of it. All right, now with this, as it is, we don't need to convert it to an editable poly or anything like that. 
Uh, but I will because it's just good practice to go ahead and treat this as if it is an actual 3D model. So I'll right click on it, convert to editable poly, and that way I have all my selection options. And over here on my modifiers list, I'm going to go ahead and select the UVW unwrap. I'm not going to go over the UVW map as I did in class previously, uh, just because uh, I'd like to keep this video uh, addressing what questions you had specifically, and that was the unwrap part of it. So that being said, with the box selected, that is key. I have my UVW unwrap uh, modifier on there. I'm going to go ahead and open my UV editor, and it gives us this cool little box here. Now traditionally, I am working. I would not be working with this in the same window I'm working with here. But for the purpose of recording my screen here through Camtasia, I keep that window on one screen as to keep the video size small, because otherwise this would be put onto another monitor completely. In other words, it would be way over here. But you guys can't see that, so I'll put it back. Now the first thing I need to go over is, just like in working with 3ds Max when we're modeling, we have, let me minimize this, we have vertices. Gonna, by the way, if anybody encounters this window, it's okay at this point to just click yes. Don't worry about it. To go ahead and access the polygons, that is if your computer doesn't just completely freeze like mine just did. Okay, there it goes. We can access the polygons here, we can access the vertices here, we can access the edges here, but also going back up to, let me just turn that off, to unwrap mode. And with unru 